This is a correction video for the previous whitewater tutorial video I did. I had missed a parameter in the whitewater solver node that caused the depth values to be zero. This video will demonstrate how to get that data back and fill it in back in, and I'll show you the difference it makes by comparing the renders between the last video and the missing volume source and how it looks when it is properly filled in. In the whitewater simulation here, if we go into uh, the .NET of the whitewater simulation, for the whitewater solver, in the previous video, I forgot to uh, plug in this volume source parameter. So this was actually blank in the video. And this needs to be plugged in for the SDF. So the volume source, the path of the SOP node providing the source volumes, liquids uh, velocity and the sine distance fields, that's the SEF for the solver. So this comes from the flip fluid simulation. If we go up here, in this, this is the white water simulation. So I had a object merge node here that imports all the flip fluid compressed simulation data. Right here, I feed it into the whitewater source. Now, right before this step, right before feeding it in, into the whitewater source, I should have this um, null here that indicates that this is the volume source. So this node, all the data that comes from this node gets plugged into the whitewater solver volume source. And this object merge, now this is the data from the flip sim, the flip sim here, this data, which is this one, which is actually this one. This is just a cache. So it's all this data. The um, this is the flip simulation. This is the DOB IO. So this is uh, the node that extracts all the simulation data, all the simulation data from here up into this context. And then I throw down a fluid compress. So this compresses all that simulation data into a more compact format. And then I throw it in a cache and a null to indicate what, um, at this point, what this data represents. All that data, all that flip simulation data gets plugged into this whitewater simulation. And this is what it's importing. That's where that compressed data is, uh, is getting imported into this whitewater simulation context. And the part that I forgot to mention in the previous video is that um, this point, before you plug it into the whitewater simulation, put down a null to indicate what it is and have this input input into the whitewater solver volume source. So, okay, I just want to show you I'm going to get rid of the teddy bear. Okay, this is what it looks like with the volume source plugged in. This is what it looked like before in my previous video. This is after you have all that in, all that data in. I think there was something wrong with my cache in the previous video. Because if you don't plug that in, for example, white water source, I'm going to just delete this. And I'm going to throw down a cache. I'm not going to do all, all the frames, only 50 frames. Okay, and then hook this up here. We render this. Or, for some reason, in my previous video, I was still getting depth values. But obviously, you if you look at it now, this, these depth values are all zero. So I'm going to plug in a different particles. If you remember correctly, I had imported the particles into a different geometry. So all the particles are coming from this one. So I'm gonna place a different 
debug uh, material so we can see this more clearly. I'm going to put 0 0.3. Okay. Let's go back to the water simulation. Actually, in fact, I'm going to take out fluid as well. Okay. So uh, we're just getting the white water particles. So this is what it looks like without without um, populating this parameter, without filling in this parameter, the white water solver, volume source, blank. So this is what was happening in the previous video. But I think I had it caching issues in my previous video because I was still getting depth values uh, in, in the previous video. But you can see now the depth is all zero. So it's uh, it's all dwindling in yellow because my material okay, I'm plugging in okay as you can see I'm plugging in I'm getting the depth plugging into the range and then um, putting a color ramp on it and the color ramp this yellow is 0.5 which is the zero mark because the depth is measured between negative one and one as indicated um here it's it's actually measured in point eight plus and minus point eight that's what this will do actually i'm going to just change this to one so then it's negative one to one so i'm going to show you what it looks like when i actually uh, plug this in with proper values, which is this. So this is what I'm plugging in right after the compress before the white water solver into the white water solver volume source, which is this. This you get color here is because um, for only for visualization purposes for the 3D viewport, you see color coming up because of this in the white uh, white water object guides color particles by depth so after I populate so after I populated this parameter I need to resubmit Re render it now we get proper uh, depth values. So that was something I missed on my part on the last video. I didn't properly uh, populate this. It was always blank. I don't know how I got. I still got depth values. That's how I didn't. That's why I didn't notice it missing. Now let me change this back to 0 0.08 and change it back to the correct white water particles. Okay, I'm going to put the water back in. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what it looked like before, which was, so you can tell that the depth value wasn't contributing much to the driving the material color you can see a more gradient feel like the the bubbles up here or they're not bubbles they're white water particles that i'm using to drive this white water material as particles if we add the sim as well so if i add the simulation one so this if you remember correctly from the previous video this is the white water volume. I turn these particles, set a density, rasterize the density, and I get a volume. So this is giving me a density volume. And I create a volume material for that volume. Let's see how would this look like with it. I might have to turn it up. I'm going to really exaggerate this. It's a little more clear. You don't have to have it uh, this high. It's just I want it to be clearly shown for filming purposes. 
Okay, that's put the teddy bear in. Adjust my particles uh material. I'll let that value. The range was going negative one to one zero one. So now will you have proper values? So we can layer darker brighter sorry. I want to thank one of the viewers for pointing out that I missed the volume source parameter. I apologize for this from the previous video. For filming purposes, I need to pre-cache different parts of the Houdini scenes to make it possible for filming, and things get pretty messy along the way. I'm sorry for missing that volume source. I hope it didn't cause uh, much inconvenience to everyone. Thank you for watching.